six record for that meeting to order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Paul, I have to say that I have Alex, but I wanted to get nervous about my very my pro constant. Um, the live stream. Is currently experiencing issues, but the meeting is being recorded and will be posted um, as soon as it's over. If the live stream comes back, then we'll uh, comes back on. We'll put it up uh, sooner. Um, at this point in time, I would like to ask if there's anyone from the public that would like to address the board for a second time. Is there anyone from the public that would like to address the board for a third and final time? If there's anyone that would like to address the board, please come to the podium. Seeing none, public portion is closed at 602. Uh, next on our report it is the administration status of schools. I'll turn it over to you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, Congratulations. To get singled out as the top two students of the entire senior class at the same high school, I think it's an honor. So I hope you realize that and you take pride in yourselves and when you hear what it's not, it's going to be just like, <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Lucy, for coming. I know this time we're very close. Thank you. Uh, 
I don't, we don't have a mic that goes to the feed, but I don't set up the mics. So at this time, we worked really hard the past few months, months on our summer programs. Um, and again, I, I mean, you've heard it from us that you know, we had two years of the pandemic. Uh, some students have been in class since March of 2020. They came back in September. Um, we knew there would be challenges. We anticipated challenges, but it was a little different. I actually thought that this year was more difficult than last year. Everybody, the students, the teachers, uh, administrators, and so on. So, one of the things that we really worked on this year was trying to get the kids back into routines, um, getting to know friends again, you know, feeling comfortable, comfortable in school, um, interacting, uh, and, and you know, working uh, with our teachers and our, uh, other students in the building. A lot of students were just used to using computers for months, so now we had to get. Hands on activities back in. Um, and then, you know, so see, watching the kids during the year, we still feel that they are there are gaps and we want to address those this summer. So we have a lot of programs that we worked on, even more so than last year. Um, my team, I have to tell you, it's been very, very good about looking at the kids. Um, we're really focused on uh, quite a few numbers in the building. And um, what we plan to do tonight is just give you kind of a little summary of each of our programs that we're doing. So I have first um, Maria Burton. She's going to be doing the Yale Academy at Saturn Rock, and she'll share a few things about what we're doing with the students there. <laughs> Incoming first graders and incoming fourth graders. And um, so this year we kept the same curriculum, it's a science based um, activity. It's a lot of fun building on world language. Um, and we have games and a lot of really nice activities for the kids. This year, last year we had about 100 participants. And this year we're um, excited to have 200. So we've doubled in size. And we're also offering. She's a summer director for the seminary. She is one of the most dedicated directors to the district and my go to person. So she was talking about the Yale Academy camps. We have them at every level this year. We started them just at the elementary last year. So, in total, together with the forensic camp, the four programs that my departments are running are uh, uh, 525. So 200 kids, we have a seven, we have about 35 or 40 at Bailey. We based on the needs of the kids coming in to newcomers. We had a lot of refugees that came into grade six, not going into grade seven. So we're working with those students again. Everything is project based. I think my science brain can answer all that. So 
a lot of it is based on the science. Um, at the high school, we do the same thing. The kids are grades 9 through 11, and they are also going to do project based science experiments and activities, but they need, they have the opportunity to read, write, listen, and speak every day during the class, which is our model of the maintenance, has been our model of uh, The science camp is a forensics camp. And when I was talking to Neil about the end of year when we were starting planning at the beginning of January, he said, why don't we look at caring? And try maybe younger kids because last year we did use of eighth graders going into ninth and then ninth graders going into ten. So this year we decided to do fifth graders going into six and sixth graders going into seven. Um, and we have over 256 kids doing the threats again. <laughs> they're going to be doing a lot of investigation, uh, they're going to be doing fingerprinting, glass platter. <coughs> we have guest speakers coming in of the FBI, the police department, uh, the coroner's office. So they get to be exposed to the forensic program. We also have guest speakers from the NH that come in. We also talk to them about the programs in the NH law course and the partnerships we have with them. So I think yeah, it was very successful last year. And again, the last day of the camp is so much fun because they have to they do an escape room. So that's really fun to come. So those are the four camps that uh, I'm working with and the departments are working with. Any questions? We'll, we'll have pictures and more at the end. So next, the special ed staff. Hi everyone. Um, so this year we're continuing our extended school year program over at South Rock School. Uh, it will run approximately 15 days. Um, so just like the uh, title of our program that allows that extended year um, from 180 days to about 135 days for our students with disabilities. Um, and the purpose of that is to maintain skills that they've learned over the course of the year um, and of course have some fun too. So we have a lot of different community providers that come in <coughs> that um, provide a lot of engaging activities during the day. Um, we incorporate, incorporate a lot of STEM based activities because just like all of other students, we know that our children learn best um, using hands-on materials um, and being able to work in that community format with problem solving. We have um, an in-house book fair that's free for students, so it's very similar to Scholastic, but it's um, free. So the students come down to classes and pick out a few books for their home library. Um, we Last year, the year before, we, we began to incorporate MEL, um, Movement Enhanced Learning, with one of our PE teachers. Um, basically, that's just um, pairing an academic task with a legal based task. And the, the research behind that is that it has the most retention of that learning activity. So you might see um, our friends out playing a loose ball while practicing. By sports activities throughout the um, school year. We have field trips where um, these are virtual pony camp boards. They have um, folks from around the country um, do various field trips for our students. We'd like to get to the point where we can go on a trip ourselves, um, but our, our students, primarily that are in our program, participate in our learning lab programs and many of them are staffed um, pretty well now with their internet. So those challenges will be able to get them to learn how to do this stuff. Questions about the case work? So I will be talking a little bit about the Lego camp that we are going to run this summer that is for grades entering five through eight. And it is a hands-on learning task in small groups. There's about 180 students participating in it, which is great. It really is looking at math, science, and some coding. So just kind of the different, we did not run this last year. This is a trial this year. We thought that that was a nice addition to both you know, the age range that we cover and the content area. Um, Nicole says, look forward to social media and other pictures that she intends on getting out there so that we can see exactly what the activities are and how they're being used with the students. 
but I'm sure many of you've seen the Lego camps and you know the after school activities and things like that that have been used. And we've used Lego in other contexts, but this is really just all hands on, really trying to make the experience about the game and actually using your hands to create and applying those content areas in mind. Uh, so we have to think of different and then last year, you may recall, there was a collaborative between our schools and the community house. The community house is, as you know, such an incredible partner to us, and we really do rely on them to provide a lot of the care that parents have, you know, overlaps with their schedules, and students are so well cared for by the staff. So I wrote a grant last year that gave us the money to run the camp for 60 students, and we chose very, very carefully because 60 slots not as many as we wanted, so we had to kind of pick and choose, but we didn't really focus on students that didn't have an in-person learning experience. We really wanted them to be back into the schools, get more comfortable. A lot of these students were kids who had already maybe been um, identified as well, or you know, had some other risk factor that was kind of preventing them from being successful, or we figured may prevent them from being successful in the So we wanted to bolster their summer to get them back. So this year, the community house beat me to the punch. They wrote the grant and they got a two year consecutive grant allocation. So we can do this summer and next summer. And it was expanded to 80 students. It's, it's wonderful. So we're running that out of McCrill. It's, um, again, a very project based. Last year, the things they did, they were doing bridge building with thumb drops and toothpicks. Um, and when I went in there and we did you know, the exit slips from the camp, we asked the kids, you know, with just like facial expressions. Circle how you felt about school prior to coming to camp. How do you feel about it now? And the mediocre faces and frowns went to smiles. And a lot of the kids really said, I didn't know school would be fun. You know, I think they had been away from the building for so long. I think they forgot how to connect to those connections with the staff that they were familiar with in the community house. And what we did kind of make it an easier transition. So this year, 80 students. And what was wonderful is that. Um, well, that's going to come up here next and tell you how the literacy program is going to tie in. So not only will these students be getting project-based learning from Community House, they will also be getting literacy support with our highly qualified staff in the context of that camp. So we're really just kind of doubles <laughs> every year where we can to make sure that students who may have struggled these last couple of years are getting that um, So I'm going to hand it over to Claude so she can kind of wrap up how um, those programs are Thank you. So I'm going to talk to you about literacy in our game team. Um, we are actually embedded in every opportunity. Um, the state of New Hampshire passed a uh, public act 6620 requiring um, uh, game support for students in the Lions district. And so we have opted to position uh, teachers to support what's going on at the EL camp. And then also we extended the school day camp. And then um, to the requirements of what is actually spelled out in the bill, uh, we are embedding our support into the community house camp, which requires progress monitoring. So we can take the scores of the students in May and then see how they uh, then respond um, back in the fall. So they will be, we're going to use what they already have in May as their score. And then uh, hope that we can uh, build enough to stop the summer slide, which usually is pretty damaging. And um, see how the students uh, are able to maintain or even surpass. Um, so, this is our first year uh, doing that, and it's something that I sort of um, co opted or collaborated with all these other opportunities. Um, but we are uh, primarily pay, uh, entering the first school board. That's where we are. I'm also here for other reasons. Oh, any questions about the summer camps? Um, in terms of uh, the funding, so did any of this fall under the ESSER? I know there was like $100,000 in the budget for ESSER to stop, you know. I don't know why I got it. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's just the same way to pass funding. Okay, so it's the same way to pass funding. Yes, so the, the ESSER funding was earmarked. A lot of people are in course to do that specifically for summer enrichment, and that's really how they focus on enrichment. Um, so, above and beyond what we would ordinarily offer, such as ESY, really just looking for those gaps and making sure that we're filling them. So, the answer funding will be for instance, the community has camp while we were doing grant that camp, we still will be providing meals and transportation for our students as well as a nurse from our district. 
all the elements and all of the funding is still coming through, or it's not all the funding, but right. some of yours may be a little like part of the funding. Right. Um, the majority of the funding is coming from downstairs. I know Matt has the exact numbers um, that's been handing in paperwork for the last few months saying there's another home for it, there's another gift for it. But I think that overall, the money that we have earmarked for summer, I think very wisely said we are reaching almost 900 students this summer alone um, with our additional funding. Um, um, is there other funds associated that I this kind of does go back to maybe the thing that you mentioned at the six six two zero? Is that at uh, sorry, I haven't had a chance to look that one up yet. Oh, it's um, is there funding attached to it, or they expect that the alliance grant funding will be the same? They have specifically um, spoken about the alliance grant that they do not indicate the amount of funding. However, the Office of Literacy and Academic Success has just um, they posted a position and they hired a position, and that is the entity that's then going to go to the funding that should support these kinds of programs. So that in um, the uh, Push for the science and reading is going to have funds earmarked for it. How it's going to come about, whether it's in a summer reading or um, some other kind of funding, I have no idea. And they have not yet given us the name of the person, so I don't know who I'm going to be funding. Uh, but I think they will say that by the March first, they should have uh, uh, a better grip on the funding and the students' funding. Sounds usual. Well, I mean, I'm I, I not concerned that there's not funding for it. I'm concerned that there's actually like so many funding sources that there's a community house grant and then there's the other funds and then potentially money for this. And, you know, the way that they wrote this is very, very complicated. So we are trying to meet their uh, requirements without really going overboard. But since they didn't have the person in charge, I didn't feel like I had to speak the letter of the law because. I think that for us, we were trying to project out because of dispersing the of extra funding for the first few years, trying to figure out last year how where is the need for our summer program. And we kind of, you know, it was a it was a mad dash to make sure that we were meeting the needs that we identified. And it was also a mad dash to try and make sure the fact that we still you know, had the whole area and the blocks. So we had fewer students that were met in the buildings. Now this year we expanded our programming because we had a better Set our sites to show the percent. So we now have kind of with a couple more like the community house getting that grant is a big help because now we know we have that for the next two years. So as we're expanding these other grants or these other programs, we can say we have that money because we've set it aside for these summer meetings. Um, yeah, Matt, you know, let things come out. I don't know them, but we definitely knew that the need potentially would grow over time because it would be nothing but more and more dollars. Do you see, Leslie, do you see an increased number in students with the programming of 60 students that you targeted last year? Did you see an increase in attendance in the regular school year? So we saw the attend well, attendance increased. So their attendance improved. We can say it improved because they didn't have the remote learning option available to them. Um, what we'd like to believe is that it improved because they had a positive experience that we connected them with the So either way, we did kind of look at those students and are the same, like you mentioned, are those same students are being invited back. So they will have those three, hopefully, three consecutive summers of being in that same program. So we did want to follow that program and see is this a program that's successful and can have those students make them into the school year. So we now have a pool of students to follow. So that will be interesting over time to see if they continue to attend and then how that improves. One more question. Sure. Yeah, I think this is um, I just thought that there is. Uh, summer school for the high school students because it's kind of recovery, which I didn't hear any of you speak on. So I don't know if that's like a really separate issue, but um, I was concerned because there's a hundred and seventy-five dollar charge for per class for credit recovery, and that just really struck me as like, and it was cash only. That was the whole summer meeting. I was just trying to get clarification on why is it cash only? Why are we charging students for credit recovery? Uh, especially since we have all this the SR funds for learning recovery. Um, and also on the agenda, it's the, um, you know, the 
adult ed program like that. Concern for some high schoolers who might especially need not be able to that. Thank 
two offices. Yep.
fire quickly to recognize those things. Um, black hair is a little bit. Uh, just any group has anything to do with how senior or senior executives and senior executives value the couple of things that we have to Um, Number one, that you know, it's just on your third and they know that they created a two degree program at the Sleepy House that is their new program. Drawback with that is that they didn't run that uh, until they reached that 21 year clock in, in that program. So, the program is great. This is the first year that um, our program is impacted by that. So, it's you know, it's, it's only a number, and I don't want to get too wrapped up in it when that's a good fit program. I wish the state could change the way that is reported because it's actually kind of silly that that will impact the graduation rate when um, they really are not that graduate to continue the education. What the state will tell you if you ask is that that really includes our reporting in the fifth year cohort. And the answer to that is sometimes. But because they can stay for 22, if they have started high school when they're 14, um, you're not done. Like you're still in the sixth year cohort. So um, sometimes they're reporting in the fifth year cohort, depending on how old they were when they started high school and how old they are when they exit, um, they may or may not be um, I've been asked to graduate them again when they go to that. No, um, other thing that the state um, that they think are protected that year is the amount of trips they see to other districts. And uh, I would never want to say that anything else is too for anything, but there are some districts that are great about following through with these things. We sent paperwork, I'm going to use Shelton as an example because they're very good at it. So I sent a paper to Shelton that said, if Penny has a dog that went to your high school, you can send it to your South High School. Um, if Penny does not register with Shelton, they will send it to me. Uh, they will start pursuing Penny with the type of education. This will come in, they will actively pursue getting registered. Some of our larger districts, unfortunately, have sent that information off and we call them with the state of Penny. And I get it because there are a lot of issues probably not to that. But what happens is the student enters our next state cohort and then withdraws from us. And that's a direct way. Haven, and you sign out for the day, and you're both in the same direction of Haven, that year, and they do, and if you have registered in Haven, that is counted in the next class as a um, possible transition. So, because of the transients that happened during COVID, I think that's where that one was a little bit. Um, if we have a little bit of an uptick in our seniors who do not graduate, but maybe not much. I think the rate of our seniors who actively think that they do not graduate. Was very small, and that um, the way your education was, but some other things that happened, and they were kind of in a different direction towards the fact, which is still good. Uh, that's where I wanted to be. I, I really wanted to kind of defend um, because it's so, so close, and that's where the state kind of puts me. But I think that this year, um, we are right back where we were thinking we will be possible for people who don't know sometimes all the other little factors that are impacting the way they are. So, what we do is uh, when the numbers are I will get in contact with you. You find the spreadsheet that they save, and then I can send you the spreadsheet. I will get all the data, and we will connect with kids who did not try to get forward. Why? And it could be that they just didn't pass, and they didn't feel like they were contributing to like the goal of education. They were great, and they were like, well, not. Um, so a lot of the times that they went somewhere else to meet those goals, they can kind of manage with the spreadsheet and send it back to you when you get the information that you're looking for. And we also so frequently about her students. And she is a fierce advocate. 
So if she knows that there's a few kids and she's looking at, she she knows everybody's grandmother, aunts, you know, probably previous graduates that were related. So she'll say, I know Tammy's having a tough time. This kid could be a few more friends. How can we, how can we do this? So those those kids are never gone unnoticed. They're never flying. There's no one that flies under the radar over here. As hard as they may try, um, they're not escaping same threat. So you are that one. Well, I have that one. Okay, so we're not. We're <laughs> still up. <laughs> but we, we are in constant contact with how we can make sure that every student who really needs that support is getting that support and for the funding. You know, like Dana said, she called me and said, I need this much money, and I have just this much in the new course. But, you know, we're going to figure out how to make that happen. Um, but it's, it's I think, the collective efforts coming out of the high school that really they're looking at every student. And even those kids that were one that came up learning and came back, they're right back in those offices and that counted to pull them in. So we're the outreach workers for that matter. So there's a lot of people that can't. I, I really can't say enough good news about the outreach that we've had in this year. Um, I'm going to talk about this year's box because it's not very high college position, but they are um, given positions or assets that we have right now. Um, I know we have several more important categories, but I think we probably have a lot of positions that we have here. I think we will. So so good. Like I I sent her and said the other day, like, are you coming back next year? Coming back, right? Because she goes, yes, I said, we're coming back. And the, the class was thinking about her. She um she's back home. So all of our outreach workers are back home. Um, Rick and Rob did a great thing. Like they're just such an asset to the community. So come and round, we put out the mentors and um, all of those things. And we just think about that. Yeah. So, uh, Unsolicited shout out out there. I'm also glad to hear about the additional support during the school year because I think it's awfully hard to learn what we need to learn in the credit of the class to be successful after because it's not just getting enough credits to get through and get to the next level, but you need to build on that foundation, especially for those kids that are going to go on to a trade school because as we were very encouraged by one of the trade presentations about all the math that's involved in building things. Um, or to college, like you have to have that knowledge that comes over time and repetitiveness. So I'm glad to hear that we're doing stuff in the beginning of the year or during the school year to keep them in the class that's you know a full term, a full term class. Yeah, it's, it's really hard when um, you have that epiphany and you start working and you have to get to that point where it's not happening. Sometimes that causes you to look at things that aren't happening a lot. You're on a diet and you eat something and you think it's so good for several days and you weigh yourself and you have a lot the next day. As a grown adult, you're just saying, well, you know what? I can do this thing about this stuff, Mark, tomorrow. I'm going to do that. So like, that's it. You forget it. I can talk about it. You got a lot of food. You got to donut. You got to do this. You're an adult. You're not about the college. I'm thinking about kids when they're, when they have had that moment and they're really fine and they're supposed to be engaged from it. That's really hard for me. So you have to kind of put a thing where, you know, we're not giving you later again. He'll always say, you're still not going to do something that's going to be useful. So we're putting kind of that scaffolding in place that can help eventually get to the things that we need to not shut down the next day. Sorry for that. Oh, no, we're <laughs> right. Listen, we're right. I'd like to get into it. We can have a question. I'm going to see. I mean, that's my question. We're back with later. It's time. Okay. So um, we left the email. Now we're moving into uh, two other little things that I just need to highlight that um, you want to take input. Um, we have a subscription to our audio book program called Learning Ally, and it's specifically developed for students with dyslexia, but it's available for all of our students because I single out one student in each class when they have that, so everyone has access to it. So on May 25th, I got a note from the uh, in this uh, Robert Dyer from Learning Ally, and he said he would like to congratulate. Uh, the West Haven School District is being selected to be honored at our annual spotlight on dyslexia conference for the district's tremendous work in advancing literacy outcomes. This award is intended to honor districts on the leading edges of best practices and making advancements in aligning to the science of reading, understanding the whole child when it comes to literacy, and effectively using the Learning Ally audiobook as a solution in this work. So, 
we're going to be featured in a conference this coming week. Um, this is the one minute video. Let's go into this. Thank you so spoken to us and we had written uh, a grant for something called Teach Rock, which was coming out um, of New Jersey, uh, a, a rock music program. Steve Van Zandt is a, it's, it's sort of a baby. And um, we put together a video and we were accepted. So I'm going to show you the video. So uh, excited I, about this one. <laughs> yeah, you should be super excited. And you have to keep it in. Hold on. Turn this over to uh, Mike O'Ryan to give you a little introduction to our website. I just want to say to him and say this earlier that Neil is doing well. Um, he's going to be sending in an update on how he's doing. So look for that. Um, so now, now uh, Mike O'Brien, uh, uh, share the website. Thank 
good long time of a lot less functionality. So I this is things are thinking. So I appreciate you uh, meeting that challenge and coming up with such a great format. Thank you. Yeah, this is going to be um, a lot easier for you to go forward. So if you can get stories up there very quickly, it's a lot easier in the back end as well. Versus very excited about it, but I can buy the new stories up there very quickly. Very fast. Well, we're, I think we're going to have to close the meeting because okay. we want to make sure that one person has to receive all of it. Um, so that doesn't mess with the back end. And that's why that's that. on the page to start with yeah. different. Yeah. We might like the system to look, but I think if one person will receive all of it, get that. So much to do though. Well, there's certain things that we're not doing. The athletic committee for this athletic committee has been um, two days ago. There's a large high rise of this. It's a little bit easier to navigate if we know that. Yeah. 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 Y
them, um, which you see from the fan banquet. Um, you will miss them, and please convey our thanks and um, gratitude for their excellent service. We look forward to seeing from you for representatives, for the representatives. Matt, board. Um, I'll start. And so, do you want to talk? <laughs> I'm trying I, to switch it up. Everybody's switching seats, and uh, I feel like I, I don't want to be picking on you. Are we doing board meeting? Board? Just board report, yeah. Um, yeah, I was. I know you said there was so much going on, like all the invitations we got and everything. And I, I just looking at them, looking at my schedule, and looking at them, and looking at my schedule. Unfortunately, I'm busy. So, um, That's why there's. Nine or ten, so but I did see that like people were in the pictures, and I was glad that some people were able to attend. I'll be able to attend. Um, uh, I was just curious, I kind of asked a few of these questions at the summer school. Um, just curious about how the enrollment numbers look are looking for next year, um, and then just kind of was curious about. Um, you know, expulsions this year just with mental health issues, and just, I'm just curious about those numbers. They don't have to be shared. Um, I think I like we usually get an email with an expulsion notice. Is that is that kind of what I think? So if they haven't had a, an email to your board yet, email that said there's expulsion notice come up. Thank you. Yeah, I haven't well, seen any. I haven't seen any in like a month or two. Because I've been slowly going through the bylaws, and I saw that there's there's supposed to be three members of the board that sit on the expulsion committee, and I, I hadn't heard anything. Like, do you know who you can't do? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen any up to this time. Amanda shared because I feel like yeah. she Amanda shared a video on Facebook about a system that was well, in place. Yeah. 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 I was going to talk about it. Yeah. 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 I can't find it now, but go find Amanda and have her show you her Facebook post. It was a really great system that I thought, although we may not have $400,000 to spend on a system um, right out of the box, there were other options in there that seemed very um, low to no cost right. Right. Um, that we could implement. And Neil said he's going to uh, have a show up and we'll talk to um, Patrick about it. I never say his last name, right? Sorry. Turla. In Turla. I just say Turla. I know that's wrong. So that's why I said I probably that. said it wrong. <laughs> uh, but he's always on that. Yes, yeah, so it would be a good pilot for me to watch the school. And then we reached out to the community. Yes. You're the main A lot of the things that. Yeah, I thought it was great. I spotted it on the main list a couple of weeks ago, right after the unfortunate event. RSR is a representative comes to what they can, is not everything that everyone should know everything right. coming from someone and here's all the time. You guys like can't be um, quiet. <laughs> some things are on a regional basis, but I think maybe it can put some parents' minds at ease, I think, to Absolutely. know where we are. So uh, I agree. We did have this problem a couple of years ago, and again, uh, he had said, you know, I'll tell you this much, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you're not going to know, and you won't know ever oh, until you, know, you never have to do it, which is great. 
Um, and I know that this school was designed, Western High School was designed with a lot of those features in mind about like the no dead space and the hallways, you know, seen, you know, down both hallways from certain vantage points and whatnot. So that's a good, a good point. Do you think I'm going to ask you to talk to the whole time? I'm going to give them a few minutes on the phone. So thank you for the time. Thank you so much. I'm going to talk to the whole time. I'm going to talk to the whole time. Just happened to be talking to a lot of people. Very confident. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I just felt so that. So I'm going to Uh, anyway, so we talked to uh, 20 breakfast and over 18 for that was getting.
$118,000 West Haven High School senior. That was great. I also saw the uh, regular uh, uh, play from the theater workshop group, but I also went to see the senior written, produced, directed um, murder mystery play the other night, which was really great. It was fun, interactive. I got called on as an audience member, so that was super fun. Um, just the talent and the dedication was to have this really unmatched by any of those. And our adult graduates go see that. I know I've missed that. I was so it's, it's not my favorite. Uh, that's why it's confusing. I, I try not to pick favorites, but I feel like that's one of my favorites of every year because those folks that are getting those degrees, not that our regular ed students haven't tried so hard, but I feel like they made a special extra effort to go back and do this for themselves and the pride on their faces when they're getting the diploma. I'm super sorry that I was out of town for my birthday last Thank you for that. Um, with that, I think that's the end of board reports. And I can move on to D1 approval of minutes for the May 2nd, uh, 2022 meeting. Motion. Second. Motion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passed. I'd like to make, and I'd like to entertain a motion to do D2 22 16 through 22 26 all inclusive for uh, resignation and retirements. A second. Any discussion? I do have one. Christine Montana was Megan's. Um, ninth grade math teacher and literally saved her and turned her into a whole new student by the time she graduated from high school. And I just was reminded of this because she was a peer advocate with Ms. Montana and she gave a speech about her um, at the peer advocate dinner that just came up in my Facebook memories a couple days ago. Um, and it was very, it made me cry. Of course. Um, and she was such an asset to the, to the high school community. And I think I'm pleased to find out that she may be coming back with a rehire, retire, rehire for next year. So I think the kids will benefit greatly from her services on the way out of here. Um, and I also want to wish all the other uh, teachers and staff good luck in their either new positions elsewhere or their well-deserved retirement. Uh, motion to uh, all in favor. Any opposed? They don't care. Any abstentions? <laughs> Thank you, motion passes. D3, uh, 22-27 to 22-29, I'd like to entertain a motion for that to be all inclusive. Second. And your motion passes second. Um, any discussion? Uh, I'm just curious. Um, when Tuesday's retired from West Haven High School, it's not for us to survey subject area, or is that just wow. The word math is just left off. I think it's just a typo. It should say math. Oh, both just they're both math. Yeah, they're both yeah, math. math. I think it's just a typo. It usually does that. Thank you. Any questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Sorry, I didn't mean to just shut up. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was, I was waiting. I was like, I think they're math. And I was thinking for a minute. So thank you. I'm going to say that. Uh, any extensions? Motion passes. On for D4, we have new business the adult ed. Um, NEDP expansion three, which came in our packet, this large uh, packet of paper that I appreciate all of that info. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? I see we have stopped here, so if there's any questions, I can keep on going. Okay. Um, so I noticed on page five, it says there's other schools that um, successfully offer. And I, I was trying to understand you know, what that means. I mean, I, I went online and looked at the program. Obviously, participants need to do a course online and get their points credit, which is helpful. Um, I'm just curious if this need is it's already met. Like, what is the need that you're seeing and can you just explain a little bit about it? Okay, yeah, NEDP is a national external diploma program. It's a federally recognized federal grant that we have for about. 12 years now, this is our third expansion of it. And so this is the third iteration of it. And because of which we are the only one in the area in the state of doing it. And so we so we um 
he did it for the meal prep as well. We get federal money for that. He did it for the entire valley, so in the Valley Regional School Pet School, and then we also do Westgate High School, and we expanded it to five locations. So we have uh, Milford, we have Valley Regional, we have Westgate High School, we have Westgate Community House, and the Boys School as all the sites where people can do it, and it's 100% online. And basically, to get in, you have to be passing some math and language arts skills test. And you also need to have a computer that has a camera, microphone, and also internet connection. And what they will do is um, they will meet with their assessors. They can meet with them in person if you choose. They can meet with them through the Zoom. And what they'll do is they'll open up um, levels within the program. And then the students have to be self motivated. They have to go through it. And if they have to go through that there are some roadblocks, you know, the assessors are going to get appointed with them to say, what's the problem? What can I help you with? You know, they really can't do the work for them, but they can help them work through the problem. Okay, so this expansion really allows us to, because a lot of that money we use, these two maybe to pay the people, but also we need technology to run it, so we have to be always, always be prepared. And we have to market it so we don't need advertisement. And so, like, part of that money and part of the other grant money that we're using, we're going to use to buy. Um, Advertisement on billboards on one five to just advertise <laughs> to advertise all of the development programs that we have, and so that's kind of what it's all the company. Um, but yes, yeah, so we use three schools that we are that we use in West Bay High, Milford, and we get the So, with the funds requested, that we're requesting that from the federal. Yes, but in order for us, we have to constantly in order for the federal to approve us. We always need to have Board of Education approval to do so because they want to see that that this board wants to see the continuation of so, it. And I've already submitted the grant, and um, I just put on the grant that the it's pending. So depending on how you vote tonight, whether it will be expanded or not, because it's not. You know, we got a lot of extra money spent last year, especially with COVID. We you know we're looking to try and expand our numbers a lot. Um, in the past, we had fourteen. Um, a year. For whatever reason, COVID took a whack at it, and so we're trying really hard to reach a lot of those people where the traditional classroom setting doesn't work. So, a adult like a uh, high school diploma, where someone, at least someone my age, and I are going back to school, there's no way I'm going to learn algebra, biology, physics, geometry, which is difficult. And so, this program just translates life skills that you learn. Into academics. And so, so you may not know it, but all the, all the things that people on a daily basis has to do in academics, and they help. And this program helps to translate that for them, and then it puts them in those situations. So, like one of those SAT questions Train A is from Chicago at 500 miles an hour, and Train B from Seattle at Louisville. And so they don't see that math, but they can translate it a little bit better for them. And I tell them the best example is. Um, my stepfather is in construction and he never went to college. And I struggled with math my whole life. And then I came home from college one day and I was going to go to the basement. And he goes, Don't go in the basement. I looked down, he took all the stairs out. And then I said, All right, I'm not going to the basement. And then I go to the desk and I just see what he's working on. And it was and it was basically advanced algebra. I was like, oh, what are you doing? Like, I have to figure out steps. I have to be 13 steps that do this way and do this long. And I'm like, I'm doing that in college now. He goes, really? It's very simple. Thing. And so, so those different things. If you never really had a traditional school experience, that you'd be able to translate all those things into the work environment. And he's actually a very smart man in math, but he's like, no, oh, no. And so that's a lot of people that we get, where it's they, you know, they, you know, it's like a confidence builder with them because they know that they have this natural intellectual ability that they just want to bring it out. Yeah. Um, so this is this is fully federally funded. One hundred percent. You just need our Yeah, I just need the board's approval in order to keep it going. Other towns have like a statement too, but we we do it for them, and it's really we do it for them, and then but they but they can they can choose if they want. Like for instance, um, you know, let's say I live in Derby, but I work in West Haven. It might be easier for me to just use my assessor in my state if they go all the way down to Derby 
what they need my assessment to be really dirty, or vice versa. I can just go to the Valley Regional High School, do it there, and then go home. So we'll leave that as a partnership because for whatever reason, those districts did not want to do it, but we said that we are willing to do it, and that we get funds for it, but they also help recruit for us as well. And so they also have a statement where those people like from Derby, Monroe, Seymour, or Milford, that's where they live, but they will have a West Virginia High School diploma because they went through our program. And so, we, so we basically, I always said, no matter how they do it, getting a high school diploma is the best way to improve the citizenry of the town. The more educated they are, the more they're going to contribute to that. We're just looking to find different and creative ways to do it. And this is a great way to do it. And I think with this extension grant, we have it for another two years, I believe. And I think by then, I hope we can expand it to and we have expanded it to not just schools but workplaces and businesses and um gateway we have expanded it to and so we're going to do a lot more with that too. Like I said, this is the third iteration of it. Hopefully when they allow us to do it again, we can do more of it. Um like double money for the home because I know we did it for like general student population. Because we're the 75% of adult ed, um, that's the high school diploma, it's funded by the state. Okay. And the other 25% comes from the whole country. So, but yeah, so we, and we have to operate within our, within our grant budget. And so, I mean, and we do pretty well by it. And so, right now, we're in the process of grant going to end June 30th. So, we're in the process of spending all that money. Because if we don't spend it, it's it for next year. So we're looking to tap out at CMS. Do you need to buy, to ever buy computers for the adults? Or yes, we, have, um, we were looking to buy computers for the adult students that we would keep them for us. They could use them in the classroom, the teacher would have to return them. Um, unfortunately, by no one's fault, COVID happened. And then everything dried up. And then we put the money, you know, we could request it, we did the, the funding. But it's just it's, it's difficult to get. I know a lot of these things are difficult to get because of the chips. And so I know like my, my neighbor did he make a new for his new car and he didn't he got it ten months later but he didn't get the chips. And so I think that's the whole thing. We we keep putting in for more and more each year. I don't think people want and we use the teacher even I want to have the teacher have their own laptop where they can if they need to, they can use it at home, they could um, go to one of our sites. And I don't want it, and I, and I don't think um, a desktop anymore is. I think it's anything that's too much need to carry around the world. Questions? Remember that when you do the speech next year after graduation. <laughs> Great job, Scott. Thank you. I also love the expanding the workplaces because if someone's already captive somewhere and they could do it on their lunch hour, yep. or, and some do. hugely helpful, hugely helpful. So great job. Um, so I will uh, ask for a vote on the paper. Any abstentions? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Um, the rest of the agenda is informational, so I'll entertain a motion later. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.